Hey guys, this is going to be a video about becoming familiar with the mustard family of plants. I am almost certain this is a mustard plant, even though it has purple flowers, which is a bit unusual. I'm going to take it back to the house and we're going to look at it and see if the flower matches up to a mustard family plant. Just grab a flower top and uh, put it in a bag or something so it doesn't get squished or dried out and we'll take it home where we can examine it in the comfort of our house. One thing to keep in mind with any plant or mushroom, uh, most importantly plants, is a lot of times they can vary greatly. I believe these are the same plant. One appears to have white flowers and the other purple, but I do believe this one is just faded out or maybe it's just a slightly different variety. We'll take them both home and examine them. Well, here's another plant that I suspect being a mustard because it has four petals and it also has these raceme seed structures on it. I'm not 100% certain, so I'm going to take it home and examine the flowers to determine if it is a mustard family plant, along with these ones that I gathered earlier. Two completely different plants that I'm unfamiliar with, but I'm going to use the flower to determine if they are a mustard family plant. Here's yet another plant that has these little seed pods that spiral around a stem. That is raceme-like. The flowers are so small though, I don't know if I'll be able to identify this one by the flower. Maybe I can use a hand lens. I'll take a couple home. Let's see if I can observe them with a magnifying glass. It's also important to pay attention to the structure of the leaves, how they attach to the stem, and uh, any other factor you can look and see because it may lead you to species identification. Growing right near that other tiny plant is this much larger plant, but it still it has the similar uh, pod-like racemes and it also has the small tiny white flowers. And the way the leaves attach to the, scent, the stem are the same as the other plant. So I'll take a leaf home. I'll take a stem with some of the seed pods home. And I'll take a flower head home because these all appear unique and they may lead to identification. Now the purpose of this video is not to identify plants by a bunch of different features. It's simply to identify it by the flower alone. But as a, as a good forager or amateur botanist, it's important to pay attention to all the features of the plant, of the plant and to use all of your senses when trying to identify it. Sight, sound, smell, uh, you can't use taste because you may poison yourself. Any features that you see on the plant that look unique, write those down in a little notebook or keep them in your head so when you get back home you can uh, use that to help in the identification process. Taking photos is a great way to keep track of all these features without having to drag the plant around with you. Okay, so here we go. I got my three or four unique plants. One is yellow, one is purple, one is white, and one, I can't quite, it appears white, but the flowers are so small, I can't quite tell. I'll take these home and try to identify them. When you get further into plant identification, this is going to become more unclear but to learn to start with it's best to focus on a, a simpler plant. That's why I chose mustard. Pull the flower off and there are basically four parts to a flower. The sepals 
the pedals, the stamen, and the pistol. And they're arranged in layers somewhat like an onion. On the very outside are the sepals. The next layer would be the petals. The next layer would be the stamen. And the final central layer would be the pistol. So we'll just start taking this flower apart. Starting on the outside. There's one, <clears throat> there's one sepal, two, three, make sure you don't take other parts of the flower with it as you pull them off. Some of these flowers are quite small so it can be kind of tricky. But right there we see we have four sepals. Make sure that's in the camera. Which it's not, so we'll bring it back. <coughs> All right. Now you can see I just pulled off the outer layer of that flower and there are four sepals. Scoop those out of the way and we'll go on to the next layer which is the petals. One already fell off, two, three, and now you have to be careful that you don't remove other parts with it. Four. So it has four sepals and four petals. Now we can go on moving further in. I have to use the tweezers again. There's one stamen. two stamens there's three there's four stamen and it looks like we have two more it's a bit tedious process <clears throat> and that's why it's good to bring this stuff back home and do it if you want if you want to do this out in the woods you can but it's just going to be a lot more difficult and when you're first learning this stuff it's a lot easier to eliminate variables like weather and fatigue and find yourself a nice comfortable place to work with really good lighting and it also helps to have a nice hand lens but you can see we pulled off one two three four long stamen and two short stamen and all we're left with is the very central portion of the flower which is the pistil. So there are all the parts of the flower. Okay guys I promise you if you bear with me this will uh, benefit you in the long run if you are serious about uh, plant identification. And really, you know, it's not plant identification. That's not the goal. The goal is to be able to use this stuff as medicine and food and for utility purposes. But for the most part, if you're going to use it as medicine and food, you have to be able to identify it. That's the very first step. I drew a little square around here so I can keep everything in camera for you. But just to review, we have one, two, three, four sepals. That's the outermost layer of the flower. The next layer in is the petals. We have one, two, three, four. Further in, we have the stamen. We have one, two, three, four long ones, 
and two short ones and we have the central portion the final layer of the onion which is the pistol sepals petals stamen pistol those are the basic components of a flower now that you have that under your hat you can go further in depth and uh, you'll you'll realize pretty quickly that this is the best way to identify plants it's the most efficient way and it's the most accurate way and it's the safest way we have six stamen but two of them are short so that's somewhat that seems a little odd maybe a unique feature and since I already know this I know this is the mustard family plant even though this is a purple flower um, which seems kind of odd to be a mustard. I mean, most mustards I'm used to seeing have white or yellow flowers. And for years, I didn't know what this flower was, and I had a hard time identifying it. I showed this flower to several plant experts, and uh, just based on looking at the flower, they had no clue what it was. I suggested that it might be a mustard, and <clears throat> a couple people said they didn't know of any mustards with purple flowers. But most certainly now, I know for a fact that it is a mustard plant. So there you go. I think this is going to be a multi-part series because there's a lot to cover. Um, but that should teach you how to identify any flower you find to the mustard family of plants. Now your only goal, the only thing left to do, is determine which species this belongs to. And if you have a, a plant book <clears throat> that is organized by plant family, you could easily turn to the mustard family of plants and probably find a purple flowered mustard fairly quickly. Six stamen, four long, two short, purple flower with four petals. Mustard family of plants. That's how you identify a plant to the mustard family. Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for all the comments, and uh, thanks for all the support. Talk to you guys later.